咁我新嘅著檔，再嘅再慢慢，長住八六多，但係夾數。半夜出去也变成了变作浪漫，三夜就把人笑，也觉得再变成了浪漫，成就很多那年也不容易。半夜出去也变成了变作浪漫，变成三夜就把人笑，不错。这个作业传统，我很讲究，不多，但你也不讲究。每页出现一遍，虽然也错了，编辑了三页，就不难做。嗯，哦，好，去，继续聊天，聊天，聊天。嗯，我莫哩，我莫哩，我莫哩，耶，耶，耶，耶，莫哩，莫哩，耶，耶，耶，耶，耶，耶，耶，耶，耶，耶，耶，耶，耶，耶，耶，耶，耶，耶，耶，耶，耶，嗯，这哦，可以，阿妈，免得老干那样打呀。嗯，好呀。Good morning, Ribochela. Hi, good morning, Mr. Hong. Yeah. Yeah, I'm sorry, I'm late. Yeah. Uh, oh, no, you are perfect on time. Perfect. Yeah. Uh, can you hear me clearly? Yeah, I can hear you clearly, Mr. Hong. Yes. But I hear you a little bit. Uh, can you make the noise, the, the sound louder, please? Okay. Uh, from my side, yes. from my side. Yeah, I can hear you clearly now. Okay. Yeah. Better a little bit better or not? Yeah, better now. Better now. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Uh uh so So this morning's uh topic uh would be on the the importance and uh, on the pro uh the process of uh, making mandala offerings. The English, if you have the book, the in the page number is two hundred and eighty three in English. Uh, so the page number two hundred eighty three. So that is one major topic or major portion of the the, the mundo or the preliminary practices uh, to make the mandala offering. So we have covered on uh, the the gamdo, um, uh, the refuge. Then uh, we have the bodhicitta. Uh, then we have the purification through the bhajasattva. Uh, we have already covered. Then the mandala, and then the uh, talk offering, and then the guru yoga. So these uh, um, six consist of the Dongwonjo. So uh, the main point here today, we will talk about uh, the mandala offering. Um, so the, the purpose of making mandala offering is to accumulate uh, merit. In, in order to attain uh, Buddhahood, one has to uh, complete the two accumulations. So one, accum uh, one is the accumulation of wisdom and the other is the accumulation of merit. So uh, accumulation of food is uh, based on or is supported by 
the accumulation of merit. So without accumulation of the merit, uh, the accumulation of wisdom alone will not be possible. Um, so the accumulation of merit is the basis. Uh, uh, the one example would be uh, water and the water container. So without the container, the water cannot uh, stay. Wherever water needs a container, wherever it is, uh, whether it's flow flowing through the uh, flowing as a river, it needs a container. The the, the channel uh, is the river, the, or it, it is the is the container. Or when you put it in a uh, when you carry it home, it needs a container, whether through a pipeline or through a tank, whatever. So uh, water is the useful thing. We use the water, right? Water is what helps to quench our thirst, uh, help us um, in many ways. But water cannot survive without the container. Uh, so like that, the wisdom is what we are seeking for. Uh, we don't need the, con I mean, uh, the container is not what we are looking for. But without the container, um, the water will not survive. So therefore, uh, even though what we are looking for, the target is the wisdom, but wisdom alone will not exist without the container, uh, without the support, the uh, merit. So for accumulating merit, there are many different ways. And one of which, one of the uh, most popular way to accumulate merit is to do so by offering mandala. So, uh, therefore, so there, there is a few citations from the sutra. So uh, we will use one. Uh, so it is from the sutra. It says that uh, that wisdom, uh, innate absolute wisdom, can only come uh, as the mark of having accumulated merit and purified the obscurations, or purified the negativities, and through the blessings of a realized teacher, uh, know that to rely on any other means is foolish. So basically, uh, accumulating merit uh, and then relying on the teacher is the key to achieving Buddhahood. Any other method, any any method other than that, is um, will not lead you to the goal. Uh, so uh, this is from the sutra. Mm. So not only for uh, ordinary beings like us who are new to the Dharma but also people who are already in the path, already practicing, uh, already in the, in the middle uh, of, uh, of practicing the Dharma, uh, in, in the path of uh, pursuing Buddhahood. Uh, we all, they all need uh, to purify and accumulate merit. So um, <clears throat> there is the, uh, uh, the story of uh, Telopa. Telopa is the master of Naropa. Naropa is the master of uh, um, Marpa, and Marpa's, Marpa's student is Milarepa. So basically, Telopa is a great Indian uh, master, saint. Uh, so uh, he said to Naropa, uh, so this is how it goes. So the line is like that. Naropa, my son, until you realize that all these appearances which appear interdependently in reality have never arisen, Never part from the two wheels of your chariot, the two accumulations. So basically, um, from the two accumulations, uh, accumulation of the merit and the accumulation of the wisdom, one is able to achieve or attain enlightenment or any um, realization. Any realization that you would have in the spiritual path is dependent upon the two accumulations, accumulation of merit and accumulation of wisdom. So uh, the peerless Thakur Buche or Master Gambupa, Master Gambupa said, even when your realization uh, transcends the very notion of there anything to accumulate or purify, basically when you feel as, uh, <clears throat> even when you reach a very high level of meditation, high level of res uh, 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 sorry, realization, uh, continue still, to accumulate even the smallest amount of merit. Uh, because the Buddha, the conqueror, which is the Buddha, in his great compassion and with all his skills, he Buddha is always skillful in how to teach, how to. Uh, so he made he made he, he showed us, he presented to us many ways to accumulate uh, merit uh, in order to gain wisdom. And one of the most 
um, the beneficial and the best, uh, the easiest for for us to do so is the uh, making of mandala offerings. Mm. So uh, I want us to go back to the very, very, very beginning. Uh, the very, very begin. I mean, very beginning meaning like two eighty three. This the beginning of this chapter. So there is one line. Uh, there is a there is a four four line standa. Um, this is Zabedur Rumbuche's own writing. So he said, you know the relative to be a lie, yet still you practice the two accumulation. So you know the, the two truths, the relative truth and the ultimate truth. So the relative truth is not the real truth. So therefore, in that understanding, it can be a lie. right? So the relative truth is a lie. But even though, uh, even though it's a lie, it is a lie that we uh, even even in the midst of that lie, uh, that 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 lie, we have to practice a two accumulation. The first lie, in the that's the uh, that that's the conventional reality or the um, the relative truth. But in the ultimate truth or, or in the ultimate reality, everything is interdependent and there is nothing to pinpoint, nothing existing on its own on or, or nothing existing inherently or not existing on its own uh, even though there is nothing there in the absolute truth one still have to meditate so in the in the initial stage you have a uh, conventional reality <clears throat> and then the ultimate reality the convent the, the relative truth and the ultimate truth left hand right hand two uh, uh, then as you progress so this is the third line you see the relative and the absolute as one yet still you diligently practice this. So initially, you see there is a left hand which is different. There is a right hand that is different. But then, as you progress, you realize that the left hand and right hand are both my hand. So therefore, in that sense, the two hands are one. It does not mean the left hand is the right hand or the right hand is left hand. But the two hands, the left and the right, are actually mine. So therefore, there is a oneness there. Uh, so even when you realize that the relative truth and the ultimate truth, the lie and the real the lie and the truth, the fake and the real, the are both one. When you when you realize that that the truth and the fake is one, even when you realize that, you still have to you still practice diligent. Yeah. Oh yeah. Now we come back to where we left off. It's the two hundred eighty five. So page number two eighty five. Uh, so we will start there. Uh, because of that, the Buddha. Uh, through his many skill, his uh, extensive skillful methods, uh, one of which is to uh, one of which is to make the mandala offering uh, to accumulate merit. So when we say mandala offering, mandala, 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 uh, the mandala that we offer, uh, that we ourselves offer, is the representation of the mandala. So um, to be to put it precisely, this is not a real mandala. It's the representation, the symbolism of the mandala. That is what we are offering. Oh, yeah. So the mandala that we offer when we do our hands like this, this is the symbolism or any other sort of, when we say, oh, I'm making the mandala offering, it's a symbolism. Yeah. Uh, then, uh, so we did that symbolic mandala. So when whenever we say mandala, mandala, mandala here, we are referring to the symbolic mandala. So the, when we make the mandala offering or the symbolic mandala offering, uh, there are two types of mandala offering according to this text. Uh, so the mandala offering, they are, uh, they are known as teaching mandala and the offering mandala, the two kinds. Uh, so the, so here in the English, it says accomplishment. Um, it's more like accomplishing anyway. Uh, so so for these two uh, mandala offering, whichever you're offering, so the, um, okay, first of, first this one important, I think. So mandala has many different ways to understand. Okay, if I explain about what mandala means, it will take very long. So mandala. Uh, so anyway, um, think of mandala as the universe. Okay. So if you say mandala, think of the universe. If you say medicine Buddha mandala, think of the medicine Buddha's universe. When we say um, Tara 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 mandala or generic mandala, think like generic universe, things like that. So think of mandala as the universe and the symbolic mandala as the representation of that universe. 
for now here, when we say mandala, we are talking about that symbolic mandala, okay? So the material for which the mandala should be made, the symbolic mandala should be made. So there are uh, different materials. So here we are talking about what kind of material one should procure uh, to make the offering. So um, so it's, it, it's up to you, uh, basically. That there's no uh, force or no restriction or anything. Uh, if you could afford, then make the mandala the, the base the base of the mandala the the, um, the material should be made from gold silver um, bronze so basically it depends on your your, um, your your means if you can afford it the best if you can afford the medium the medium if you can afford the least the least so on and so forth like that so uh, precious okay then 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 that one and the offering itself uh, the mandala should be made from the best the 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 the, 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 the The, the uh, based on your means making the offering uh the, the base should be made from gold or silver like that uh, so the precious metal semi precious metal wood stone like that so that is the uh, that, that is how you should be made then within the uh the base base means where you the, where you put the mandala offering huh? so the offering itself the object of offering uh, should be made from again like uh, precious stones uh, if you can maybe diamonds <laughs> uh, uh, make offering of the precious stone semi precious stone or any like a uh, jewel so basically that is the offering itself yeah so okay these are all the base the base so this is the base and then uh, the the offering material itself is like this. Uh, so this is the offering material, and this is the base of so, so the base of the mandala, and the offering uh, substance of the mandala like that. This is just an example. Yeah. So uh, we will continue with this a little later. Uh, so now we continue. Okay. Okay. Um, so offering kind, the best would be, uh, according to your means, the best would be, of course, uh, like precious stones. And uh, uh, the second best would be uh, medicinal uh, plants, uh, uh, like uh, different kind of medicinal plants that you can offer, <clears throat> like uh, the, the herbs that you, you make. Uh, or you can make offerings of uh, grains of rice and uh, uh, different kind of different kind of grain you can offer as well. Uh, so the accomplishing man. So first we 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 talk about the accomplishing mandala. Yeah. So the accomplishing mandala, <clears throat> you have uh five piles or five objects. Uh, so for example, like this is the mandala. Just this is an example. So you put uh five piles. One pile in the middle. Then on the uh, what do you call uh, um, on the four four sides, uh, east, west, north, uh, north, east, west, north, south. So you put on the four, basically five five points. Yeah. Uh, so in the so the five also why five there? This is because of the five Buddha family. Uh, this is because of the five Buddha family. So in the middle one, you will put uh, the Varuchana Buddha. In the middle, in the center, Varuchana. Mm -hmm. To the eastern side, to the east. Uh, so I will explain where the east is, okay? So uh, the east, I will explain later. So on the eastern side, there is the uh, um, representation for the Aksho, uh, Akshobhya Buddha. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. So there is something called the five uh, family, five Buddha families. Quoting, in general, there's the five Buddha family, and especially in the... Uh, uh, in the Kriya Tantra, there is the five Buddha. Uh, there is a five, five Buddha family of the Kriya Tantra. So according to that, uh, that uh, the Varuchana represents the Buddha family, and the Akshobhya represents the Vajra family. So uh, then on the south is Akshobhya representing Vajra family. Uh, then on the uh, uh, east, east, east is Akshobhya. Then on the south is the Ratna Sambhava, which 
represents the jewel family, jewel family. And then on the west is the Amitabha Buddha, uh, which represents the Lotus family. Yeah. Uh, then on the north is the Amoga Siddhi, which represents uh, the action family. Okay, so you have the five, uh, five, five points represent, representing the five Buddhas, which represents the five families. So the five Buddhas are actually the head of the five families, five groups, five uh, community, whatever you may call it. Right. Uh, so now I'll explain what the uh, maybe yeah. Now I, have, I will explain what the east is. So the east can be two. There's two. Uh, east can east can start from two sides. Either from your side, you can start from your side, and the east can start from your side, or the east can start from the. Um, so you are the one person who is offering, and then there's the person who is being offered. So the subject and the object. So you can. You can you can decide the east uh, from your side, which is the uh, subject, or you can decide for the uh, east from the object side, the person whom you're offering. Uh, so either way, when you start from which when you start with from the east, and then you go clockwise, east, uh, then uh, kind of south, west, north, like that. Uh, so if you start from uh, in uh, in the front of you, uh, meaning uh, away from you, then you start from this point, right? This point. Then uh, this is uh, east, south, west, north. So if you start the east from here, then east, south, west, north, like that. So if you uh, do it towards you, then the north will be on your right side. If you uh, do it uh, away from you, then the north will be on your left side. Okay, so there's another <clears throat> way to uh, visualize this. So this is, uh, we call this material, materialistic or material mandala. Then there is the visualizing mandala, which means you don't have any of this object. You are maybe in a, you are traveling in a train or you are by yourself with no means, nothing. You are, you know, you don't have any of this object then you can offer the mandala through visualizing. So in this case, uh, you must have the same thing. Uh, you just don't have the object. So in your mind, you visualize the, the five points. Yeah. So in the very center, there, there would be the great master of Odiana or basically Padmasambhava, Guru Rinpoche in the center, yeah. visualizing. So, uh, Top of him, on, on top of the Guru Padmasambhava, who is none other than your own root guru, on top of him, on a one one uh, one upon another, there are all of your uh, gurus, 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 gurus like that. All the lineage masters are on top of the uh, Padmasambhava. Then in the front of Guru Rinpoche, so that would uh, let's say this is the east, huh? uh, so that which is the east Guru Rinpoche in front of Guru Rinpoche is Buddha Shakyamuni. Uh, is surrounded by the um, so he's surrounded by all the so this this during this kalpa there would be one thousand buddhas so the Shakyamuni Buddha is surrounded by all the other thousands buddhas in the east or in the front yeah on his right on on uh, on uh, Padmasambhava's right would be the eight um. Eight, uh, eight great bodhisattvas or eight close eight great close sun. So basically, these are great bodhisattvas like Maitreya Buddha, Manjushri Buddha. Uh, so, but those Buddhas actually come during the Buddha's time. They actually uh, appear as bodhisattvas, not like Buddha. Okay. So the eight bodhisattvas and the other bodhi the great bodhisattvas on the right side. On his left, on his left, which is our right. Okay. So on his left would be. Uh, uh, the Shavaka masters, so basically not Bodhisattva, but very high level uh, uh, monastic, uh, high, high, high level realized masters. Uh, so the Shavaka, the head of the Shavakas are Bogalina and Shariputra, etc., et Ananda, etc. So basically, those were on the left side. Behind, behind Guru Rinpoche would be all the teachings of the Buddha symbolized or represented by books, uh, scriptures, textbooks. And all the textbooks, like hundreds of thousands of millions of uh, text, uh, scriptures, 
they are all in a lattice or a cabinet made of light. So normally we make the cabinet of wood or plastic like that. So the cabinet is, uh, you know, the cabinets, the small cabinets were made from light. Uh, so that mandala, so we have two types of mandala, the visual mandala and the material or the, which sometimes we call the actual mandala. So the actual mandala uh, and the visual mandala, there are two types of mandala. Uh, usually, of course, we just think uh, an actual mandala. So after making that mandala offering, uh, then you don't destroy the mandala. You actually put it in front of, uh, you put it on the uh, on the altar. Yeah. You put it on the altar. So basically, uh, it doesn't have to be perfect, but you just uh, think that you are. Uh, this is this is the Shakyamuni. This is the uh, uh, Verachana. This is the Akshobhya. This is that. This is that. Like so, think like the five Buddha families are there. So basically. You just this will fall down. It doesn't matter. Just put some here, 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 like that, and then put it on the uh, altar. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah. Now, uh, if you cannot do any of that, if you don't have, if you cannot afford that, then you can do all this offering visually. So no need for any material, and visually make this offering and place it uh, somewhere. So okay, you don't have the means to procure. At the mandala, you don't have the means to procure uh, the altar, none of, none of that. It's okay. So you visually make the representation, just thinking, and then put it on the altar, your imaginary altar. You put it there. So you, you might think, okay, in today in today's time, who cannot afford this? Who cannot do this? Um, but then, you know, there are some places, uh, sometimes in a country or sometimes in a, uh, in a family, you're not allowed to do this kind of practice, this and that. Then you can do all of them visually, just visualizing. Now I will explain. Uh, the next is the this is the uh, uh, accumulating mandala, right? <clears throat> That's the accumulating mandala. Now with this accumulating mandala, you put it on the altar and then you make offerings to that. Oh, but it should be uh, put in front of. So and on the in the altar, you may have the uh, image of a Shakyamuni Buddha or some uh, Buddha image already there. So the mandala should be put in front of that. Yeah. Uh, accumulating mandala. Mm. So if you have space, you can put it right in front. Or if you don't have space on another table, you can make the five offerings. So the five offerings is for the five cents, for the smell, for the nose, uh, you know, this and that. Yeah. <clears throat> like that. Uh, okay. Then so now the offering mandala. The offering mandala. So. So, so this is the uh, the material you need for the offering mandala, okay? So normally we say when you go to buy the shop, you say, "Oh, I need a mandala," but this is the representative mandala. So it comes like this. So you have to remove all of this first. Um, first of all, you need to clean this. Even if it's clean, you have to clean it again. So according to the tradition, you actually have to clean it up, all up. And after cleaning it up, you have to apply it with something called uh, the the pajung. pajung. Okay, I will explain what pajung is. Mm -hmm. So pajung is uh, five types of five substances that you get from a cow. And you you, you apply that. So there is something called pajung rilpu or pajung pills. You So basically the five substance from the cow. You apply that, after cleaning it all up, you have to apply that on the mandala. So, do you want to know what the ajung is? Yeah. Yeah, maybe, maybe later in the Q&A, okay? So yeah, basically, you... <laughs> yeah, I will explain. <laughs> so, uh, apply the ajung. Uh, uh, then let it dry, yeah, okay, like that. Then your your mandala base is ready. Okay. So now what for for to start? What you have to do is to uh to start. Can you see the uh, image in front of me? Yeah. Everyone can see, huh? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So before you start, uh, you have to check some. So you have to hold it in your left hand and offer with the right hand. 
So these are uh, just uh, grains of uh, like marbles and different stones. Okay. Coins, no diamond. Huh? So, uh, so pick up some in your left hand. So never offer with an empty hand. Always offer with something in your hand. Yeah. Something. Pick up some things. Pick up some stone. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, then, so after picking up some stone, then pick up the base in your you know left hand like this. Then with your right hand, also pick up something. Right hand also pick up some. Uh, then offer or just put on 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 like this. So basically, pour some offer some stone. And then wipe it three times. So here in the text, it says as many as you can. Normally, we do three times uh, clockwise, three times, uh, three sets of three times clockwise and anti-clockwise. So basically, uh, what, like? Yeah. Uh, nine, nine, 18 times, yeah. Mm, yeah. Like that. At the time, you're reciting, uh, <clears throat> you're reciting, at that time, you will recite the, Seven limb practice, uh, you know, the prostration, the confession, that one. Yeah. So some put it like this, and then three times, again, three times, again, three times. Then three times anti-clockwise, like that, like that. Okay? Yeah. So basically, uh, 18 times, nine times clockwise, nine times uh, anti-clockwise. Yeah. Okay. This is the... Like uh, usually how we do it here in this book, it didn't say how many times. Okay, it says as many as you can. So important thing is when you are wiping it, you are wiping with the uh the bottom of your wrist. Sorry, you one time, right? So you are wiping it with the uh the the right the the right wrist. If you do your hand like that, you will actually see the veins. Uh, so we call them the wisdom veins. So rubbing that vein actually activates the wisdom. Okay. Uh, this is not only to uh, yeah, the knitting body, but also to act the wisdom uh, vein or the nerve. So there are many stories of Kadamba masters who don't have any any of those means because uh, they, are, they don't have the means. So they make the offering with the stone. They don't have the gold or this or that. So they make the offering on a stone. Uh, so the stone <clears throat> is kind of rough. So when they make this offering, they, uh, what do you call it? They hurt themselves. So in Tibet, uh, there's a place where uh, uh, the, the Master Tsongkhapa, where he make the uh, Andala offering on a stone. So because he did it uh, so much, and uh, I think he, he offered about 500,000 or something. Uh, so when he was doing the mandala, the Nongonjo practice, then that time uh, it he was doing it so hard that it, it cut into the, the stone. So there is a mark left behind like that. So first use your wrist. Then after making, so because you, you practice so hard and then uh, your wrist is uh, hard, then the bottom of your wrist is hard, then use the edge of the wrist, edge, the edge. Then this is hard, then use the back of the wrist. Oh, yeah. Uh, now, okay. Okay. The, uh, like this, start with this. And after making, I don't know, 10,000 times, 20,000 times, you're okay. You can switch to this and that. Okay. Okay. Now we will go to, uh, so when we make the actual offering, actual offering is based on a book in a small prayer known as the 37 element mandala offering, 37. So the 37 uh, practice, uh, cause of the 37 objects, uh, 37 heaps, it's called 37 heap, 37 point, 37 points of offering. That is, uh, the, uh, that one is, uh, written, composed by the great Sakyapa master, um, Rogun Shugil Pakpa, Pakpa Rinpoche. His name is Pakpa Rinpoche. So he became the, uh, the root guru of the Mongol king, I don't know which one, uh, Genghis Khan or whoever. whoever. So anyway, so um, <clears throat> uh, it's written by Papa Rinpoche, and this is the popular mandala prayer that all the Tibetan tradition, Nyingma, Saikya, Gayu, Yelu, 
we all recite the same mandala text. So uh, 37 heaps of uh, mandala offering. So it starts with Omoa Vajra Bume Ah like that. So now we will start with that, okay? Page number 286, bottom. Yeah. Or yeah. 287. Page number 287. Okay. So uh, according to this tradition, here it says that you hold the mandala in your hand, the left hand, like this. And then uh, you offer the ajung, the, 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 you offer the sprinkle the water that contains the five objects, five substance from the cow, the ajung. Uh, so generally, we apply it one time, and then we uh, we don't offer it over and over again. But here, okay, according to this text, it says, uh, spray spray the base with the ajung water. So you have cleaned it as many as uh, you can, right? So all the cleaning is already done. So now you start the actual prayers with the Omo Vajra Bhumi. Uh, maybe I will share the text to you later, okay? Uh, so Omo Vajra Bhumi, uh, this is the first line. So when you uh, say the first line, uh, then take some grain. You have to uh, put it on there and then clean it. So Vajra Bhumi means uh, the Bhumi is the land or the earth. So basically it purifies or blesses the earth. Then Rekha, I think Rekha is the, uh, the fortification, the walls. Um, so yeah, you, you bless the walls. So, uh, so every time you make the offering, um, as if, uh, when the fence or the wall is not, not there, before you make the offering, you have to wipe it one time, just one time, wipe it, and then I put like this. Yeah. So, Rekha is the fence or the wall, like that. So, one, right, and then say it like that. Yeah. So, there's three fence or three walls. So, put the first one, big, the biggest one, put that, that one first here, like that. So the 37, now you start making the 37 offerings. So 37 is basically uh, the Mount Meru, which is the basis of the whole universe. Um, <clears throat> then you have the sun, the moon, uh, the different gods, goddesses, this and that. So basically it comes up to 37 different objects. Yeah. That is what you're offering. So according to the ancient understanding, the very base of the whole universe is something called uh, the Mount Meru. Uh, and so the Mount Meru is a very big mountain. Uh, then uh, surrounding the mountain, there is the sun, there is the moon, there is this and that. So this yeah. is what you're offering when you offer the universe. Yeah. So whether there is a real actual Mount Meru and this and that out there, like sun and moon, which is surrounding the circling the Mount Meru, this and that, is a, uh, it, it, it is debatable. It's question, it can be questionable. Mm -hmm. And uh, for example, like His Holiness the Dalai Lama, he does not accept this uh, this particular theory. Uh, but in general, uh, what you are doing is you are making an offering. So it's representation. I told you this mandala is not the real mandala; it's the representational mandala. So for the representational purpose, you can use Mount Meru, you can use Sun, Moon, all these things. Uh, there's no there's no problem for representation or for making accumulating merit. That's okay. If Mount Meru is there or no, not there. Philosophically, you can debate about that. But uh, for the purpose of accumulating merit, you can make the offering of Mount Meru and all these things. Yeah. Basically, because uh, um, His Holiness is a very strong, ardent fan of science. And according to science, the Earth is a globe, it's round. Uh, the Mount Meru concept is based on the fact that the Earth is flat. So that, that, that's why there's a contradiction. Oh, yeah. So um, in the center, you make the, already make the offering of uh, Mount Meru already offered there. After making the Mount Meru, you put the fence. And then there is something called the four planets. And the four, uh, four planets and the uh, four uh, sub-planets, okay, many planets. So basically, there are eight planets. So the four planets are on the four sides for cardinal direction, east, south, west, north. And the mini planets or the sub-planets are on the um, northwest, north, uh, southeast, uh, et cetera, like that. So basically on the eight direction, there is the eight different planets, uh, sorry, four planets and uh, four sub-planets, et cetera. This is also you make offering like this. Yeah, so just like before, 
you start from east. East can be from your side or from the uh, from the subject subjective side or from the objective side. So where, wherever you start, do it clockwise. Yeah. Um, so we have the the Mount Meru. We have the eight planets. So that is uh, nine of them. Then we have something right nine nine objects. Then there is something called uh, the the seven attributes of the royalty. So anyway, I will not go into this now. Okay, you can find it out, out later. So basically, the thirty-seven uh, things that are very highly regarded in the universe in this world, uh, so all are offered to the merit field to the Buddha. So I'm just I will just make an, uh, I will not explain all these things because it's kind of irrelevant in today's time. What is the precious cow? What is this and that? Right. And so basically, all these are uh, great offerings that you make. Okay. If you want, you can ask in the question, then I will answer what is this. Uh, <clears throat> so you make the offering. I will just make a demonstration. Yeah. Uh, so clean it nine times already. Yeah, I will make a just demonstration. Yeah. <laughs> ยืนดังลําโยโจนเมญยันดังเมญยืนดังจมบอเจเดโอปะสุนเจเดโอปะสุนเจเดโอปะสุนเจเดโอปะสุนเจเดโอปะสุนเจเดโอปะสุนเจ
for when you are doing when you are receiving an actual teaching dharma teaching from your teacher you put this mandala uh, in front of the teachers the your gurus at table or in front of the guru uh in general practice like when you are trying to accumulate number of like hundreds of thousands of number of uh, mandala then you can destroy it you can dismantle it so the dismantlement should be done by throwing it towards you so if you throw it towards you it's like receiving the blessing if you throw it outwards it's like all the blessings gone out, out outside of course in reality of course the blessing will not go just because of right blessing buddha's blessings are not that cheap so it's not like if you throw it that way the blessing go away if you throw it this of course this is not like that but because we human beings are very much dependent we call the, this this world is known as the desire realm so we are distracted or attracted by everything um all the objects so when something goes out outward then we feel uh, because all these things are like you're making offering you're making the precious stone this and that so we also have uh, our own attachment so let's say i have some gold coins there something precious there when it's go that way my, my instead of making the offering my mind is thinking oh my gold coin is falling down that way but if it's coming towards me i feel like oh it's coming towards me so you have your mental attitude actually uh, uh makes a big difference as to how to, how you are making the offering how you accumulate the merit so when 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 you feel like you are receiving the offer then your mental attitude is like uh, good uh you you have you are in a good mental state that way uh, your practice is also becomes pure but uh, let's say during the time of the offering offering means giving you you are giving at that time the gold coin uh, falls from the uh, from 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 the from the mandala and then you are like, oh my gold coin oh my oh, oh no that time you feel stinginess you feel uh uh yeah like that then it's not good for the offering yeah. so that's why who wants you so after done you just put it all like that and then pack it so uh this is one set of type of mandala offering this is like generic type of mandala offering uh but according to this very lineage this very teaching text there is something called the mandala offering of the three kayas or the three enlightened bodies of the buddha and i think because of time constraint we will have to uh stop here and they continue uh, where we left off uh, next week uh, okay so then if you have some question from today's practice anything you can ask so far no questions i want a quick question from the two ladies as they would sure, sure, sure. yes you do the bazoom the bazoom oh. of the five oh. system of the cow please yeah yeah Cow. Cow. Yeah, con bò, con bò đấy ạ. Vâng. Cow. Cow. Con bò lên đấy ạ. Vâng. This is, uh, yeah, yeah, not, not cow. Yeah, yeah. the Tibetan, yeah. She asked about the Bajum. What does it mean, the Bajum? I know, I know, I know, I know. Yeah, yeah, I will explain. I will explain. So, uh, Bajum is basically five substances that you receive uh, from the cow. Um, that th those five substances is actually the urine of the cow the piss yeah uh, then the stool of the cow the you know the, the stool urine and stool yeah then the milk milk then butter butter and ghee ghee yeah what 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 does it mean as the, 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 the final one what is it ghee ghee is clarified butter so when you uh, boil the butter yeah uh, i mean when you when when you like uh, cook the butter yeah. then the butter will be it's called clarified butter uh, so the uh, what do you call the impurities of the butter will come out on one side and the pure pureness of the butter will come on the other side yeah. uh, so that pure pure butter is known as ghee yeah 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 uh, uh, <laughs> <laughs> urine uh, yeah 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 Ribochela, yeah. the, the lady asked uh, how to make the bazoom from the five substance. Lab. Okay. So, so this actually has some, okay, this is also similar to uh, the concept of the Mount Meru. As I told you earlier, the Mount Meru is not actually accepted by His Holiness. And I think, uh, yeah, many great masters also don't accept anyway. 
So the point is, this is based on uh, the ancient Hindu cosmology at that time, uh, uh, the Mount Meru system. Similarly, uh, the five substance from the cow is also a practice very popular among um, the the Hindu scholars or the Hindu tradition. Uh, you know, at that time, um, even nowadays, of course, in Hinduism, this is a very very important thing. Uh, so a lot of uh, Hindus they drink and eat all this uh, the cow dung and the cow urine and all this thing. <clears throat> so they consider cows as holy, and because everything that comes from is holy, and you, of course you don't eat the meat of the cow, you only take the, the this, this kind of thing like that. So <clears throat> there is some connection in Hinduism uh, to this thing. Uh, but in any case, we actually make the uh, five the, the five substance of the so basically the pajung pill. Uh, the pajung pill, you can say that it's actually quite clean, uh, to be honest. Yeah. So I don't know if you have seen the Tibetan like pills, like Tibetan medicinal pill. Uh, so there is a for, there is a formula to make the different kind of pill in Tibet. It's similar to like Chinese medicinal pills also. So we basically uh, compact it into small pill size. Uh, that pill actually contains the substance of these five uh, objects. So the cow dung, cow urine, um, then uh, the uh, the milk, the ghee, uh, and then the curd, yogurt, right? Um, so these five substances. So they they were you just need a little bit, just need a little bit. Not you don't have to have like uh, like a big portion. So you mix all of them together, and then you make it as you would usually make that the, the Tibetan pills. <clears throat> then uh, after after uh, after uh, mixing all of them together, you dry it. If you are let's let's say you are making it at home, uh, you have to dry it in the sun. So that way, all the the bad smell or whatever is gone out, and basically it just dehydrates, uh, make it all dry, and then you can uh, roll it up into uh, into a pill, or basically use it, keep it aside as a substance. That substance on the uh, the, on the on the mandala. My 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 point is that in Tibetan community, because you can find pills like this, uh, sorry, uh, like this. So made from so we call them pajung pill. We can find it like that. So it's easy to make it. Uh, uh, you don't have to make it yourself. You can find it. But as I said, if you want to make it yourself, you just have to mix all of them together and then apply it on the. Uh, you can like directly apply on the on 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 the mandala. This actually comes from the, as I said, from the Hindu uh, tradition or from Indian tradition. Uh, in Indian tradition, even nowadays, if you go to the village, village, uh, the rural area, uh, they don't use the uh, concrete cement for the flooring. So for the flooring, they use a mixture of uh, mud, earth, and then some of the cow dung, and I think cow peas, cow dung, and they so they make they make this mixture. Like you would mix the concrete with sand uh, and uh, uh, cement with sand like that. So they make this mixture and apply on the floor. And the floor becomes very clean, very easy to clean, and also kind of a little bit shiny. Uh, it looks very nice. So it's been the tradition of India. For, like traditionally, in the ancient time, uh, people used this thing to make their ground or make their flooring. So because this mandala is, <clears throat> the base of the mandala is like the flooring, it's like the floor for making this offering. That's why we are applying this on the mandala. So when we ask the, the, the local Indians, they say that the, the older generation, they say it keeps the room cool and it keeps the room away from the mosquitoes and different flies. Because of the cow dung, there's some, uh, I don't know, some chemical, whatever uh, comes, whatever that actually drives away the flies and drives away the mosquito. Basically, uh, and then keeps the room cool like that. That's what they say. So this is the custom, and uh, you may do it this way. And if you feel, if you are a, if you are a stickler for cleanliness and all this thing, and you feel very uncomfortable uh, getting the cow dung, this and that, especially when you are making the offering to the uh, triple gem, you don't want to uh, apply the cow dung, this is that, you feel very uncomfortable, then you can actually apply saffron water. Saffron, apply it with saffron. 
So <clears throat> the two types of two ways of thinking. One is to think like that. Another way is if you look at it, then the for the Buddhas, there is no dualistic thinking. Like this is clean, this is dirty, this is good, this is bad. There is no such distinction. So for that reason, uh, you can, if you make it like this, uh, or this such such an offering like that, it's not going to offend the Buddhas. Okay. Yeah. Any more question or no? Yeah, we will chill, huh? Okay. So yeah. that means no qu more question, I think. Uh, so I will stop. We will conclude here for today. And uh, now we'll go to the dedication. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Jomo <laughs> Thank you, Zibutela. Thank you, Miss Wayne. Thank you. 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 Thank you.